This is episode 73 of the Steady Trade Podcast with your host, Stephen Johnson. But when you don't have the composure and it lost slips, it's very easy not to cut that loss when it's real money. So Liz is literally playing as if she was on heroin. And no Tim Bowen. Five people. It's a lot going yeah, on. Yeah, especially when you're one of them. And I'm not, and I mean that with the most love. Oh, because it's not uh, like I mean I that with the absolute most talk love. over people or, you know, or anything like that. You're kind of like Steven's training wheels. And I just want to see how Steven does, you know. Hey, I got plenty training. of fucking shit to do. <laughs> he is not training wheels. Wheels. <laughs> because today, Stephen is coaching up his three intrepid paper trading contestants. This is about you guys. It's it's your time to shine. So, I mean, we can go left or right. We've got Liz on the left, then we've got Louis, then we've got Jude. Yeah, that's right. Intrepid and truly riveting, I'm sure. And you know what? Stephen is actually a very good coach, don't you know? You have been amazing. First of all, I, I, have, learned, I have learned so much in this last two weeks. Um, especially really marking the support and resistance points, which I have not been On the daily. On, on the, the daily. daily. But don't take my word for it. Listen for yourself. Are you checking your dailies daily? Welcome back to another Steady Trade Paper Trading Competition episode. And you will notice that I did not say that wrong like Tim Bowen. And the reason I didn't say it wrong is because Tim Bowen is not here. But in his absence, three beautiful, great people. Uh, it's it's the Junkers team. Say hello, everyone, from Hi. the Junkers team. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> loving it, guys. Yeah. Loving it, guys. We've uh, we've been we've been on a rodeo, which has been a couple of weeks together, and and I, I'm I'm super interested to hear what you guys think of me training methods. I think. One one person's already said the door one is to they, they've stopped sending videos <laughs> because they think I'm too harsh. <laughs> that must be Liz. So, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm slightly worried that I'm I'm gonna get fired from the whole competition to begin with. But uh, why don't we just open up? This this is about you guys. It's it's your time to shine. So I mean, we can go left or right. We've got Liz on the left, then we've got Louis, then we've got Jude, uh, the three paper trading uh, members. Uh, why don't you tell her what? Uh, how you are doing, what's your balance right now a few weeks in, and, and what, what have you been strong at, and what have you been weak at, and what have you learned? And we'll go Liz first. All right, right now I'm trying to buy sneakers on the network app. I'm a little busy. Um, how Liz, am I doing? I've told, you, I've told you about distractions. Come on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm pulling up my account. Um, I'm at $48,789.84. You are not, Liz. You are not. I am, and I sent you a video today. Uh, That's right. No, Everyone be scared. Um, how am I doing? Whoa. Um, yeah, just, whoa. Just... I, I'm quitting school. I'm dedicating my time to becoming <laughs> a, sneaker, a sneakerhead reseller. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to flip stuff. <laughs> um, what else? I've been listening to a lot of Gary V. Uh, while, I, while I paper trade, I've been riding TLRY like it's a roller coaster. Um, stop right until I wait. Liz, stop listening to Gary V and listen to me. Gary V is an inspirational guy. He's from Moscow, or however you guys say it. I can buy it. But, Hang on, but, I'm busy. But, okay, keep it, keep it moving. I gotta buy it. Hold on. Uh, expedited shipping. Liz, yeah, Liz stop, stop, stop with the shoes. Liz, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a background on Liz while she buys some shoes on the podcast. You would have. Oh not, my god! Would have at least not seven and a half. You would have not got this position if I'd known that you do this on the air. But, they uh, are sold but out. <laughs> what am I gonna do now? <laughs> Liz, Liz is literally the winner uh, so far of this month, and she's been very I good. Buy any shoes? <laughs> My plan is ruined. Liz, I, I want you to step oh away from God. the shoes. I want you to put your phone down, and I want you oh, to tell the guy. Guys, it's sold yes. out. Stop it, Liz. Stop it. This is this is how my trading experience. Steven says, "Stop it, stop it, stop it," and I don't, and I'm winning. So, <laughs> give the guys, give the, give the guys, and tell the, the audience secret, then. what's the secret. How have you been doing totally so well? Keep against the coach. How have I been doing so well? Um, trading like a maniac with huge size. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's my secret. Liz has been basically following quite volatile stocks. And she's been trading them off intraday levels. And she's been looking for kind of the double tops, the higher lows, the lower highs. And if it's a double top, if it's a lower high, she's 
for me, it looks like you're kind of trying to follow trends and you're going, you sh- if, it's, if it's a long-term downtrend in stock, you kind of shorten that lower high, you shorten that double top. If it's an uptrend in stock, you're looking for that higher low, right? Or no? I use a lot of lines. You um, use a lot, yeah. You try to follow and, trends and scalp them, right? Yeah, I like scalping. I like size. I almost was down 5K, but I'm up 5K. I don't know how it's working, but it's working. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a realistic strategy in real life, but it works really well in paper trading. You but know why? Real- you have to get in and out quick. Just like with the shoes, people. I couldn't get the shoes. Oh my God. I needed but, those shoes so bad. <laughs> oh. But I, I, would, I would argue that Liz's strategy should be, it should be uh, feasible in real life if you have a huge account and if you uh, have the composure that Liz has knowing that this isn't real money. But when you don't have the composure and it lost slips, it's very easy not to cut that last one. It's real money. So Liz is literally playing as if she's on heroin and she's got no emotion. <laughs> heroin makes me, heroin makes me you should hear her first I'm thing playing in the as if I'm on cocaine all the time. What is this it? is on speed bowls of heroin. <laughs> no, forget the heroin. It's all about the cocaine. Don't do drugs, people. Okay, so, so Liz, Liz, Liz is doing very well. Liz is doing very, very well. But I she's playing. My account, to the my account is fifty percent up. The other team should be very afraid of me. Okay, the balance I'm resets. The I'm the <laughs> okay, but Liz is doing well. Liz is doing well. Louis, how are you doing? Huh, I mean, I don't know how I can like compare to that one. Don't don't worry, Liz. Liz will <laughs> blow up and fail like a atomic bomb <laughs> on Japan. Just nope. <laughs> trust this. Nope. It will nope. happen. Uh, <laughs> Louis, how are you doing? Uh, you know what? I'm doing great personally. So I'm looking at my account right now. It's at 27,460. It's not grand. It's not where I want to be, but it's been a really great learning process. Um, and thank you for the videos. I will send you more videos. I've got one actually I was working on this morning with and Bev, so I will definitely get those out to you. Uh, it's been a little bit wacky here on the West Coast, so my personal schedule has kind of gotten in the way a bit. Just give give a heads up about that because you have been a little bit quiet uh, and things do happen. So just just give a heads up of where you've been and stuff like that because I think it's important for the guys. To know. Um, well, if anyone hasn't been really paying attention, to what's going on? Um, it's been a bit crazy here in California. Um, we had a mass shooting over in Thousand Oaks, which is just over the mountain, kind of like in the backyard. Uh, we've got crazy wildfires, so the air has been um, not so great. Um, it's been not so bad here in Los Angeles, down in Southern California. It's actually much worse in Northern California, but with all that happening, and the fires were in Malibu also, which is about 45 minutes from where I am. So there was just a lot going on within the city. Um, my work schedule got a little bit busier also because we're moving into the holidays. So it, it was just a really weird for a while, and there was a bit of a standstill here. Um, it's one thing when you know you got people being killed by a natural disaster, but then you have that also by a man-made disaster. So it just it was a bit odd. Okay. But, we're we're going to turn you. Around. We're going to turn you around, and you're going to do better. And then, if we just look at Jude, I just want to ask Jude how she's performing. And then, what I would like to do is kind of just get one thing that you've struggled with and one thing that you've learned just in in the recent month. But Jude, first of all, how have you been doing? Um, better since I um, stopped doing everything that I shouldn't be doing. And so the first couple of weeks was a challenge. I've never paper traded. I did one paper trade just for shits and giggles when I first got stocks to trade. Um, it wasn't even a real paper trade. So I basically, I started off with um, trading real money and small positions and going from, from trading real money to paper trading with a $30,000 cap. was kind of like when I, uh, like when I went from driving a standard to an automatic. So when I learned how to drive a standard, I wasn't concerned about getting from A to B. I was just concerned about starting it without lurching forward a foot and then stalling it. And uh, if anybody's learned on a, a standard and went to an automatic, you know that the first time I went into an automatic and put on the brakes, I slammed on the brakes with both feet and almost shot myself through the window. And that's kind of how it was with, 
with trading on a paper account is I, I didn't really know how to handle it. It was too much to, I w now I was like concerned with going from A to B. Um, I had FOMO. I was uh, jumping into trades that I shouldn't have been jumping into. Uh, my setups weren't showing up because of the market. And I wanted to trade something um, at home when I'm paper trading. If my, if my uh, pattern doesn't show up, I don't care. I don't trade it. I'd rather not make money than lose it. But with the, um, with the paper trade challenge, I just wanted to get my trades in. So I did a lot of mistakes and my first two weeks was probably in my history of trading was my worst two weeks ever. And then I just dialed it back and followed what you told me to do. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to wait for my patterns. And so then I had a couple of successful days in a row and now I'm just waiting for my next setup. And okay. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna risk looking like a total jackass here, and I'm I'm gonna ask you guys what what you've learned over the two week process. And if you've learned nothing, then then I'm no. gonna explain some stuff to you. But you you have been amazing. First of all, Agreed. I have learned I have learned so much in this last two weeks, um, especially really marking the support and resistance points, which I have not been on doing. the daily on, on the, the daily. daily. Yes. This, that this is such a cool opportunity to have you guys. Yeah. Okay. So your your recent trade on the the Canadian stock is a GOSS. Is it Canadian? I don't know. Sure. It, it was a was it GOSS? Just guys, did you all see the uh, video of trade on GOSS? Was it GOSS or GOUS? Goose. Uh, yes. GUSS. Yeah. Okay. G -U -S -S? Beautiful. A beautiful yeah. trade. The fact that it was fifty two week highs. It was breaking out. Uh, I don't know what the catalyst was, but it was a 52-week high breakout. But you've got to take more into account with that than what, what is the market doing? Is the overall SPY, is the NASDAQ having, yeah. or is the standard and pro, is that having a red day? Is the stock, has the stock already gone 8 to 10%? What's its normal range of how much it increases? Do you know what I mean? Did you see the video on the kind of the points I was making there? <laughs> I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch but it today? The last, I, I, the last today. one. I, was, I actually meant to re-watch it. I have to watch them a couple of times to digest. But, but what, would, what would you say was, um, what, what was the thing that you struggled the most with and what are you kind of learning now? And then we'll move back across to Louis and we'll go right to left. What have I been struggling with? What have okay. you been struggling with and what have you learned? Um, well, my struggle has been more of this the psychology aspect of FOMO and wanting to get the trades in because I'm in the challenge. Um, and also uh, trading on a platform that I'm not used to. I wish I had practiced trading on the stocks to trade platform because I keep making silly mistakes because I've been so used to trading on my old platform. Um, and um, yeah, so FOMO was my, my biggest struggle. And what was the next question? What, what have you kind of stuck, began to learn? What have you improved at over the challenge? <clears throat> Waiting for my setups, getting more clear on my setups, getting more clear on the support and resistance points, and um, basically everything that you've, you've been teaching us. I've, I've been really taking that in and, and um, studying that and practicing that as much as I can. It's going to take a while for it to you know, get into my brain, but, um, it's been invaluable. So, yeah. Uh, I, I appreciate that. And, and you just remember you are literally learning Chinese and not, not just any I know, Chinese, but tribal Chinese. Like it, it is a Chinese that no one has ever learned before. Yeah. Okay. So it's not easy. Um, I've, I've also been at this for three years, endless days to try and, to try and get where I am. Uh, I was super impressed, Jude, with, with your read of the daily chart, with the read of the fact that you could see that the, you had a trend that you wanted to look for. You are looking at the multi-year breakouts. You are taking the trades at the multi-year breakouts. You are spotting the daily levels. I thought everything that you were doing there was really cool. And I loved your discipline at waiting for those setups. And I see how you're looking at some of the indicators, the VWAP and the EMA to see if they line up. Yeah, um, there's a little thing that I've, I've noticed that I wait for. Yeah. And uh, I, I love that you have the discipline to wait for that. Uh, the, the only thing for you is uh, you sometimes you don't realize that you're chasing, but you are chasing. So it's just yeah. looking on the daily chart and seeing how, on average how much a stock moves. And if it's already moved a lot, like with the, the GOUS, it had already moved a lot. And then you are buying it kind of 
at the top of its range. But isn't that the, oh yes. But I also explained that because I was waiting for a specific type of dip, but it didn't actually do that specific dip, but I still bought it. Um, that was just the wrong dip. But, uh, but, but I, honestly, I see, I, see, I see the same patterns with, with, with each one of you, but I really feel yeah. like you're on the right track. I really feel like if you, if you continue the way you are, uh, we'll do a few more lessons. Maybe we'll do a call on the weekend. I want to do a call with you. And, uh, and hopefully right. we, can, uh, we, can, we can keep you going. But I love that you're taking the lessons on board. Absolutely. And, uh, and yeah. you're doing good. And, and Louis, uh, how are you doing? What, what is the main weakness that you've got? And, and by the, I already know in my head what, what, what the weaknesses are, but I, I want to <laughs> see if we're aligned. <laughs> um, what is your main weakness and what is your main strength? For, I think for me, my weakness is it's one, it's FOMO. It's the fear of missing out because, you know, oh, I didn't make that trade. Oh, I should make a trade. I got to make some money. Let me take that trade. Ah, oh, God dang it. I burned on that one. Um, but it's also chasing. Uh, I kind of like when I see that high a day ping up, I kind of become Liz when you put a laser light pointer near her. She just like runs all over the place. The minute I see that come up, I just get all like, I got to get it. I got to get it. And I buy and I jump in on it. And it's the worst <laughs> position, not thinking of my risk, not thinking of my exit, no plan, no strategy, just, you know, chasing the laser pointer. So, I mean, bless you, Liz, if it works for you, but it's, it's not working for me. It's just, I, I, I must be a more of a dog person. But can I... Can I <laughs> Can I just ask everyone in general, do, do you have a plan beforehand thinking if this stock hits this point, I'm going to trade it off. This stock hits this point, I'm going to trade it. Or are you just seeing stuff moving? No, I am trading with the plan. Actually, I just watched your most recent video um, based on my recap. And which, one of the stock? things that I'm, that I'm learning and that I'm actually, it's kind of like hit me this morning is that you taught me that. I'm looking at just one indicator, such as the catalyst, or one thing, such as the intraday chart. I'm not looking at everything, such as the catalyst, my personal schedule, the intraday, the long-term chart. What's the news? What's the SEC filing? I'm focusing too much on one thing instead of looking at everything all together, getting the full picture, and then going in with a plan. I'm going in with a plan with just like half a picture, basically. Uh, guys, I mean, I've got to say a lot of you, in fact, all of you are not trading penny stocks. All of you are trading the higher price stocks. I see, and, and I don't blame you because the penny stocks are, are quiet right now, but I see all of you trading TLOY, GOUS, um, and MBEV, which is like a, tw a 12 15 $20 stock. You're all, you're all leaning towards the higher price stocks. And if you play the higher price stocks, which is what I've been doing, is, and I've had good success this month, especially you have to, the most important thing ahead of the catalyst, ahead of the volume, it, it's the daily chart. It's so important to play the daily chart. And we'll move on to Liz and then I'll show you an example of how important the daily chart is. It's a lesson I've already given you, but I want to do all three together live. Uh, so Liz, uh, uh, if, I, if, if I see shoes again, I'm cutting you straight off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not even going to cut you off. I'm going to block you off the call because I, I need you 100% concentration. But Liz, what have you learned? And I hope you've learned something. I hope you've listened to something. And, and what have you been good at? And what have you struggled with? I'm so upset right now because I couldn't get shoes. There's not another opportunity for me to get shoes. So don't worry. But what have I learned? I've learned about the daily chart from you. Um, what have you learned I, about the daily chart? Because this is important. Like, I learned that when you pick a stock, you have to look at the daily chart and you have to see what is going on and you have to do like arrows and stuff and you have to <laughs> like ask yourself, um, I feel like I'm in school. Oh my God. You have to be like, is it going to go up or down and why? And I don't know most of the answers to those questions. So I focus primarily on my uh, intraday chart, which I love and loves me. Um, and it's all about going all in with your whole account and just woo, <laughs> seeing what happens. And it's working for me. So I'm going to keep going and grinding with my strategy. I'm up over 50% in 12 days. That lets me know that I know what's going on. Maybe in the real world, I would just blow up completely. But in the paper trade world, I'm going to win. So... <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, you you are killing it in terms of paper trading, and you are you are doing a good job. But the thing for me is, you could kill it even more. Like you could do an even better job, 
But you, like what you're doing, so, Liz, <laughs> what you're I doing is you're, you're seeing a move happening. You're seeing a move happen. Uh-huh. Like say a stock is overextended, drops, bounces, and then you're following the bounce down and then you're covering and then it bounces again and it makes that basketball thing. You're just uh-huh. shorting the lower highs, but you're missing the big drop and then you're shorting the little drop and the little drop. The but what a lot of professional traders will do, like, they, they will, like they will catch you, the big picture. Like I told you in a video, your lessons to me feel like, it feels like I'm doing a thousand piece puzzle and every day you mm-hmm. give me like one extra mm-hmm. piece, but I only have a few pieces right now. I'm learning something, but I, the whole picture is not going to come all together in like one minute. No. But no, I did it, learn it, stuff it, 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 about it the daily chart. Like now I sent you a video. It's 18 minutes long. I don't know if you're going to watch it, but it has some daily analysis. Yeah, I might have to be drunk to watch that one. But no. I'll, I'll, <laughs> Why? Liz, 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 has, some, Liz has some attitude over there. <laughs> and what's it to you? You just, wait till you, start, you just wait till you start trading real money, Liz. Oh, uh, that's not the wait. competition that we're mm-hmm. in. So, well, that's the competition I'm in. Well, we'll just see how long her strategy yeah. right. work. Right. I would. I think we should show some support, but we've got to remember that at the end of this month, one person will be going, and everyone will be resetting Ooh. back to thirty thousand. And guess what? Guess what? Because of my insanity, it's not going to be this team because I am blowing Bowen's team out of the water. So, all of you should thank me. Thank you. Is it, is it the? I think it's the person who's the lowest gets kicked out. On either the team. person who's the lowest. I would, love, I would love. To, I would love to 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 ride on Liz's coattails on this, but I don't think it works that way. No, I, I think uh, the person that uh, comes dead last at the end of this month will be eliminated. Yeah. And I think one person wow. will be eliminated. Liz will go back to thirty thousand. So, wow. Liz, I hope your strategy is sustainable. I it hope is. you keep on paying attention to the last. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm sure you'll be doing Guys, good. Go all in with your whole account. <laughs> it's bound to work. <laughs> Hilarious. I'm telling you. But um, all in. Do, you, do you guys have any kind of questions? There is, maybe we can do five or 10 minutes of questions and then I just want to do a kind of a, a live lesson. But do you have any questions so far about trading or... Anything that's not been in video lessons yet? Yeah, how do you do it? How do you trade? <laughs> Liz. Because I don't get got, it. Liz, it's like, okay, let me, does anyone else have any questions? And then I'll go straight into this. Because I really want you guys, all of you trade higher price stocks. I really want to show you guys one time live where you can ask questions, how to look at the daily. Okay, okay. so question. This happens to me all the time. Sitting in front of a computer, seeing a stock. Okay, it's running up. It's got good news. Now, how do you differentiate whether it's going to be just a morning spike, a dip by opportunity, or just something that's going to keep climbing all day long? Because I've seen all three, and I never know which one is which and where to enter. Yeah, it's, it's a really good question, and it comes down to a number, a number of different things. Uh, the first thing that you want to look at is the daily chart, and you want to think, like say for example, this is the time, like is it an uptrend in stock? Is it a downtrend in stock? If it's a downtrend in stock, there's a chance it might just be one green day. It might be a spike and a fail. If it's gotcha. an uptrend in stock, it, it might have a better chance of holding its highs. But the second thing you need to look at is, does this stock run multiple green days in a row? And if this is the first green day, does it have a second green day? Does it have a third green day? You see how Tiller, mm-hmm. um, do you see how TLR, TLRY really ran? If mm-hmm. the stock has a history of running three consecutive days in a row, and this is the first green day, and it's trading on some level of volume, there's a good chance it will have at least a second green day. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it's all about history doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. All, a lot of stock traders, they're not looking at fundamentals. They're looking at technical analysis. And, and the third thing is, is like going back to your like DCAR trade, you remember DCEL? Mm-hmm. You chased DCEL long. You, you followed a pre-market and then you, you went into the, the morning spike. Yeah. And if you look at DCEL, do you see how the, the body of the candle is very thin, but it's got a very big wick, a very big wick on the daily? Yes. That big wick is because it, can, it comes up, but it comes straight back down. Mm. Right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you ever see big wicks on a daily chart ever, 
that immediately means that stock cannot hold its highs on a daily. Okay, mm, so one does once you pushed out to me that I didn't realize the difference between the body of the candle and the actual wick of the yeah. candle. Uh, it's huge. It's huge. Mm. And 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 the fourth thing is, uh, it, are you coming into any kind of resistance level? Like if it's a downtrend in stock. Are you on the daily chart? Are you about to bump your head on some other things? So let, let me show you a, a chart, for example. Okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll kind of do this yeah. live. Good Candle book here. Course. Yeah, it's really good. One sec. See if I can bring something up. I've got something on Slack. Okay, let me just uh, try and screen share. Uh, okay. Slack. One sec. Zoom. Uh, share screen. Hopefully I can just, okay, I can share desktop. Okay, can you guys see this chart? Yeah, Enbev. Yeah. So with Enbev, <laughs> you can see like that. You're on that one. <laughs> no, but you can see that. I wonder if I can move this. Yeah, I can put this full screen. Okay, so with Ember, just a general analysis, it's, it, it's ran one days, two days, three days, four days, right? And then it gapped up and it, it ran five days. But then it's been in a downtrend after that. So a lot of people are kind of underwater. So when it, when it pops up here, it's kind of like it might run two days, but mm -hmm. you've also got to look at the volume. So for example, when it, when it ran to 10, it ran to 10 on like 100 million volume days. And on these days, it's only trading 20 million. And it's and all of these people are kind of underwater because a lot of people were long and then they've sold and they've been waiting to try and get out of the stock. Does that make sense or no? Yeah. So unless this stock trades like 300 million volume, it's never going to get up here again because a lot of people are buying this in the sevens, the eights, the nines, and then they've held all the way down. And the next time it spikes, they're going to sell again. So this needs huge volume or it's going to just fail. So this stock is going to, every time the stock spikes from now on, it's going to fill in the fours, the fives. Do you know what I mean? Damn, I wish or is I it not really clear? Two hours ago. Does it, does it, do you know what I mean? Or does it not seem too clear? No, I, I totally get it. Okay. And the other thing to kind of look at with Embev is it's, it's not really trading much more volume than 30 million a day. If you look at the bottom candles where it's trading 20, 25, 22, 24, it's kind of stuck in this channel where it either, it kind of, I mean, I'm just looking at it either, it tops, if we look up here, I don't know if you can see me mouse, it tops around the fives and it bottoms around the threes. So my advice to you, Louis, before was, and this was with TLRI, TLRY, but it applies to MBEV as well. When it hits these fives, just short the fives. When it bottoms around the threes, just go along the threes, but look for the double tops in the fives and look for the double bottoms in the threes or the higher lows for to go along in the threes. And you basically, with these higher price stocks, you're just playing a basic game of support and resistance with good risk reward. Do you know what I mean or no? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Does that make sense to other guys or is it really confusing? Well, on a stock like Enbev, I would do the red-green move. I was waiting for that today because if it does go green, then it will get a bit of a push regardless, generally, maybe. Yeah. I find. Uh, let me... No, I get it. I played Enbev this morning and I was not a good one, but everything that you're saying, <clears throat> and again, I didn't, I wasn't paying attention to the amount of volume that was being played today. Again, that's didn't one it, did it, that I didn't. Didn't Enbev just go red though? But that's, that's, that's such an important mm -hmm. point as well, because mm -hmm. we, let me just get back on uh, face camera one sec. I'll just go back on zoom. That is such an important point. Like we can't guess what these stocks are going to do. Like no one has any idea if you could predict the stock market and what it was going to do would all make millions of dollars, right? You wouldn't, no one can guess it. You can kind of guess it. You can kind of think if this stocks went three days up in a row, the next time it has a big green down, big volume and a good catalyst, it's probably going to go up at least two days, right? But you can't guess it. And this is what I'm really trying to do with you guys. I'm trying to get you in positions where you're in the best risk reward possible that if you lose, it doesn't matter. Like if you risk 30 cents, but you can make a dollar, it doesn't matter if you lose 30 cents five times, right? I'm just, cause no one can predict the stock market. So I'm trying to put you in positions where it's such good risk reward that if you lose, it doesn't matter. 
And if you win, you're going to win a lot. Or you're going to win reasonable amounts. But to get in those risk reward situations, it's hard. You need to, you need to have experience. And that's mm-hmm. why when I'm telling you guys, you're chasing, you're chasing, you're chasing, you're chasing. It's because I'm really trying to get you perfect entries, right? That's when I, I noticed when I put in the, um, the previous resistance or support lines like you taught us, almost every time that stock is going to dip down to that point and then bounce back up. And I haven't had the courage to, to buy at that level, but now I'm noticing it more and more. So eventually I'll start buying there. Yeah. Yeah. But just, just remember that it's, you need 50% of it is on the daily chart. So 50% of it is you see the, when you look at the daily, like there's a lot of bottoms at a certain area. There's a lot of tops at a certain area Mm -hmm. with your 52 week highs, for example, say it breaks out a key level. uh, It breaks a 52 week high breakout and then it starts holding the 52 week breakout. That's, that's not enough just to buy the breakout. You need an intraday confirmation as well. So you need the double bottom or you need a higher low. So if you see a stock like, you, you've showed me videos where you've said, look, I should have traded at, at this level, right? If you're scared to trade it at that level, wait for more confirmation enter day, wait for it to bottom and then come up and then bottom again and show that it can hold that bottom enter day twice before it pushes off or even better, it bottoms and then it doesn't even get to that bottom because too many people, other people are trying to buy it so it makes a higher low. So how long does it need to consolidate at that second bottom for you to be sure? Because that's another thing that happens is I wait and I wait. I'm like, how long do I wait? And then it starts to go again. And then I've kind of missed that bottom. Yeah, no, well, that's, that's, that's such an, that's a, it's a very, very, very good question. And the answer is, for example, when you trade the, the, the GU, GOUS stock, that ripped so much that you, it, it made such a big move that you need to wait for a long time for that to consolidate because it made such a big move that it really needs to hold that level. And, and for that, you need to wait like three hours, four hours. But when a stock drops in the morning and it hits a daily support level, that daily support level has already been holding for like three days, four days, two weeks, three weeks. So it's already held. So if it pops up, pops down, hold, holds the double bottom, even for a minute, Mm-hmm. then you can just take it. But it hasn't made the move already. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and your risk is, say, say, it, say the daily support level is $30. Drops to $30, pops up to $30.50, pops down to $30. Just buy. I mean, what are you risking? If it goes to $29.80, you've lost $0.20. Cents. Just buy the double bottom. Take the risk. Mm-hmm. You've lost $0.20. Cents. But if it works, which it should, because all higher price stocks will hold support levels always on the daily, then, then you'll make money. Do you know what I mean? All right. Does it make sense a little bit? That's to me. Uh, any any other questions? Mm. I feel like I'm just rabbiting nonsense. I hope I hope you guys no. can. I yeah. hope you guys can. Let's think some rabbiting nonsense. This is like <laughs> she's this is like get, get, get lost. I'm killing it. I'm Liz killing it. Still, Liz is still <laughs> trying to buy sneakers. She's just not letting us know. <laughs> Yeah. Liz is like, I'm going to be the show of the podcast. I'm doing the next people trading competition. I'll be the medal. Scalp, scalp, scalp. Yeah, maybe, maybe next time there will be uh, three teams. <laughs> One will be just team insanity. No, what I'm thinking about is when I win, um, I want like a puppy and a new computer. <laughs> Okay, so guys, just but just before we close out, just as one final thing, I think you'll all, I think you'll, um, I think you'll all do well if you apply the lessons, and and I've had such a good time making the lessons for you guys. But I just want to know from each of you, what is the next goal that you want to work out out on? What what do you want to improve next in your trading? And then maybe we can uh, I can apply that more in the video lessons, and then we'll close out on that. Stop. And uh, we'll go with. But you, you need to know, you, thing is though, Louis, you need to know when you, I think Louis, you know when you're chasing, right? You see the overextensions. You, the first trade you did, you, you didn't with the earnings winner on FIT. Do you remember FIT? Mm-hmm. Fitbit? Mm-hmm. Did you realize you were chasing then or did you not know? I didn't know then. Or maybe I didn't want to know. Do you see the overextension now? Because you, you need to be first in the move, right? Yeah. Because yeah. If, if, if 95% of traders lose, 
and you're buying after everyone's already bought, you're behind. Mm -hmm. You need to predict the move or you need to see the breakout, right? So you're going to stop chasing and you know when you're chasing now. So that's, that's progress. I'll leave Liz to last because I'm terrified of her answer. And Jude? <laughs> We're all terrified Jude? of Liz. <laughs> Jude, I, want, I really want you to improve because I've known you for a few years. Uh, you're a cool girl. We've hung out a lot. Um, I, w I want to see you get to the next level. So what do you need to improve on? Um, well, the, the double bottoms. So having the confidence to, to buy um, at the previous support. And also... I don't hold long enough when I'm in a good trade. I get scared out. Absolutely. And I, I may have, you may have sent me a video on that. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's such an important point. And I've, I have sent you a video on that. And if you haven't watched it yet, this, this was your trade on, it may, I think it might've been Enbev. En, Enbev. Yeah. And you are coming, you are coming into resistance and you sold because you thought it was resistance. And the oh. best advice. I, I mean, I knew it could have possibly kept going, but through. I just, didn't want to lose anything. That's okay. So here's, here's some advice for you. And, and the, I, I do this in my trading uh, constantly. I, I don't trade in and out ever. I scale everything. Mm -hmm. So how about you take 2,000 shares next time, for example. Mm -hmm. You sell half when you think it's hitting resistance. Mm -hmm. And then you, you put a stop at your original buy, your original buy point. And then you literally can't lose, right? How can you lose? And then you've got no fear because you've already got a profitable trade. How about that? <laughs> I'll do that. Does it make sense though? Yeah, it totally makes sense. And I, I knew that that's, that's what people do. It's just when it starts to go down and I see my gains going and I'm like, no, I don't want to lose my gains and I sell out too, too fast. But I'll do that. I'll hold on to half of them. Yeah, just, just I mean, I do that. I do it more than that, but I didn't want to confuse you. But I, for me, when I trade higher price stocks, I'll take a position and then I will sell a third into an immediate push. And then I will sell another third. And then I will just leave the last third just in case something like really the market tanks or really the market pushes. But I, I trade in thirds, Stephen Ducks trades in thirds, Roland trades in thirds. It's really a good habit to get into and paper trading is the, the, right, the right way to do it. And, and lastly, Liz, closing comments Yeah. on so Team Donkey. Nice to see you all. This is what I want. I want you to watch my latest 18 minute video. And when you reply. I'm, I'm going to get drunk as fuck for this, by the way. <laughs> when you reply, I want you to not include any judgment whatsoever because I'm so incredibly sensitive. If I start to check out because my feelings are hurt, it's going to mess me up. So just be nice to me. Don't tell me that my videos are repetitive or that they're dumb trades or you're not doing that. But I, I'm just I do not say dumb trades, I know, but I do. I know, I know. I do, so but you, they, all, they are repetitive. All I want is support. And I want you to explain like what the chart is the way you see it after seeing it the way I see it. So I can learn. So I get one more spaghetti noodle on the wall to stick forever. Yeah. Um, I also uh, want some calls where you just tell me I'm motivation. <laughs> <laughs> We've already <laughs> done calls. I tell you you're going to win. I We've want, already done I this. Want Only wait away. Calls. <laughs> I want more calls where you just tell me I'm going to win because I need to hear it externally too. That's all but, I want. Uh, no, he's not allowed to do that, Liz. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Unless he tells us all we're gonna win. That's fine, but I just want I just want my support uh, phone calls. That's my Liz, request. <laughs> what are you gonna I, do, Liz? What are you gonna do if you end up in STT Pro and and Tim Bowen calls you a degenerate? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Point. I've been called a degenerate. That's fine with me. I'm sensing, I'm sensing a lot of cattiness, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ignore all your statements. Um, Liz, yeah, listen. I'm here to win. So if that if that threatens anyone, then back up, bro. <laughs> Liz, listen, I will help you. I don't know about the late night calls or the winning <laughs> calls. I will, I will help you. But you've got to analyze the daily first. I know that it's not your strength. I know your strength is intraday. But you have to, have to, have to learn to analyze the daily. It is what all professional I will, traders do. I will, through and your help. I will help you learn it. I will help you learn it. I'm good at it. And I will make you good at it. Just good. don't lose faith. Just don't lose faith. Oh, my Just faith don't. is so like there. It's so there. But to all of you guys, don't 
don't just struggle. Just look at what you're weak at and think how can we improve at it and we'll all improve together. What a gay message, but it's cool. That's sweet. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. It's a little gay, but it's a little bit cool. But uh, any, any final messages? Me uh, computer's on 10% and I don't have a charger and I think we need to close this out anyway. So any Thank final messages and we'll wrap this up. What would you like to say to Tim Bone Sam? Let's just close it on that. Just leave now. <laughs> <laughs> Do us all a favor. And, Do yourselves a favor. Anyone else? <laughs> I just tell them to listen to Liz. Okay, peace, guys. Very nice to have you here. Uh, I'm sure we'll do another call towards the end of the month. Keep on sending us videos. I'll reply to every single one. Keep on watching the daily. Be very aware of chasing and don't lose faith because over time, the corrections will help you uh, learn the foreign Chinese language. Okay? <laughs> spicy. Oh, that was a little spicy. <laughs> <laughs> She's from New York. Are you from New York, Liz? Brooklyn, baby. Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. That's where the accent's from. No one's perfect. Oh. Jude, you're a hater, bro. You're a hater. I am not a hater. You're a hater. I'm there calling you no, out. There you is are. no hate. No. There's you, need, no. you need to use those crystals a little harder, yes, man. I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm just feeling insecure around That's you. That's fine. Don't direct it at me because I will, I will chop you down to size. <laughs> there we go silence nice. thank you oh, you, win. Send, you, win, send, you win that one i win all i do is win <laughs> but i can't get sneakers. okay guys send his videos do the daily first always the daily first yeah don't ever show us enter day first i need to see the daily this is where you'll you'll learn to move forward and louis don't put too much emphasis on catalyst liz Daily, always, Jude. You're doing well. Just, just try not to chase too much, and, and look for the support and resistance levels on the daily, and then you're all good. That's it. All right. Thank you for my call, Steven. <laughs> Hi, this is Aaron, aka Double A Ron, from New York City, and I like to go outside and find a stray dog, preferably an aggressive breed like a pit bull or a Rottweiler. Then I get real close stare it down eye to eye until it starts to chase me then i run that's right i run while listening to steven and tim on the steady trade podcast you can register to win real actual prizes at their website steadytrade.com and if you really like what you hear give the podcast a five star rating and write a glowing review on itunes i did and this is how we say goodbye in new york city Oh, 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 oh,